welcome you to a Girly Girl Geek tutorial. This tutorial is going to cover adding SEO value to your website built on WordPress with the Headway theme. The first thing you're going to want to do once you've logged into your dashboard on WordPress is navigate to Headway. When you mouse over the little Headway area in your dashboard, you're going to see this drop down menu. If you don't see this drop down menu, then maybe you have to click on it so that it shows. But either way, this menu is here, and the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the options area. Once in the options, you're going to see right up here at the top are these tabs, and search engine optimization is right there in huge letters. So you're going to click right there, and it's going to take you to these SEO templates. And at the very beginning, this has to do with your entire site. This is SEO that's going to be associated with the entire website, the whole domain name website here. So if you look, it's showing my tagline first and the site name second. These are just little um, indicators, and it will pull the information from your general information area, your general settings area, whatever your site name and whatever the tagline is that you've put in there, it's going to pull it in there. And there are all kinds of little helps here. Um, you can see that it, they write out, you know, single most important on-page SEO element for the title of your page. So, you, if you're providing services um, of some sort, for example, in my situation, I provide virtual services. So my tagline might want to be, for SEO purposes, um, Hickory, North Carolina, or Conover, North Carolina, or Western North Carolina, whichever I want to really target. Um, but it might say Hickory, North Carolina, virtual assistant services. Um, I know that on my actual website, I think I have Hickory, North Carolina virtual assistant Tina Marie Hilton because of my social media background, because I have a lot of followers on social media. They don't always know the name of my business, which is Clerical Advantage, but they do know my name and that I'm a virtual assistant. So this way in my title, it's keywords that someone might use to search for me. I realize that not everyone is going to know the name of my business but a lot more people are probably going to search for my name. So it's important that my name is in there, but I still want my business name there. So by using that tagline area, and I will show you where it is, just in case you're not aware, um, it's down here in the settings under general. And you can see this is uh, a learning space website, but you would put your business name there or the name of your, your blog or your site. And then here in the tagline is what I was just talking about, where you would put in, you know, your location, uh, some some sort of keyword for what the peop what people might be searching for. So the title, very very important. Spend a little bit of time thinking about what you want to put in there. Uh, definitely spend some time thinking about what the what your audience or the people that you're trying to reach are going to be searching for, so that. Uh, that can get picked up SEO wise. So let's go back to that search engine optimization area. We've got this all taken care of and you can switch it around. You can put site name <coughs> on the front and tagline on the back. You could actually, if there was something that you wanted to appear there, you could actually type words in there and it would appear in there. Um, and of course where it's going to appear and let's open it in a new tab so that we can see. You can see up here it says just another WordPress site learning space. So the site tag, which I have as the default, um, is showing when I hover over that, that and then the name of the site. And if you had switched them, then it would appear just the other way. So you can play around with that a little bit. You don't want it to be too much and uh, information in there, but you definitely want to target some keywords. Same thing with this meta description. Um, like it says underneath here, it's maybe not quite as important to search engine ranking, but it is important to get people to click through because it's going to give a description of your site. So you want it to be short, around 150 characters. You want it to have some of those keywords in there, and you want it to give a good description of what your site is about or what your service is about, you know, or what you're selling. Um, 
something that when people read it, the people that you want to reach again, you, t you need to think about those people that you want to reach so that when people read that, it's something that they are going to click on and say, okay, I want to know more. And down here, it actually will show you um, what those little input shortcuts are. And you, you'll notice that the percentage sign is on each side of them. And it's title, site name, your tagline, um, and meta, which is the taxonomy. But um, I don't, I've never used meta in there. The tagline, the site name, and the title, I sometimes do. Now there's this advanced options, and they tell you not to mess with these advanced options unless you know what you're doing. And you definitely don't want to. Um, but I did want to touch on them so that you knew why you didn't want to. Um, it's actually to keep your pages from getting indexed. Um, all of this stuff is so people can't follow your links, your pages don't get archived, you, you know, no snippets are formed. Really, all of these things are kind of um, anti-SEO. And there are reasons for them being used. For example, I have a membership site and my membership material, um, I don't want that getting indexed by the search engine. So, you know, I enable some of this on the pages so that the actual material that people are paying for doesn't end up on the internet because the search engines are picking it up. So there are purposes for this, but on a general website, you don't want to touch that. So usually your advanced options you're not even going to touch. Now up here you can see, here's your template. You can select your template. I have a template for my blog index for your pages and posts. So you can go down through here and you can actually set up different SEO for each one of these. Um, if you don't, it's all going to do from this blog index, it'll carry through. But um, like for single posts, single pages, so say your posts are on a blog page and you want the title of your blog, because the title of your blog is something different from the title of your site, to be used instead of um, your tagline. You can go to the post page and you can, um, instead of your site name, you can take that out and you can actually type in what, you know, what goes there, maybe the name of your blog or whatever. So you are able to play around with that a little bit. I would suggest that unless, you know, that's the case, unless, on, unless your post page is actually, you know, a, a blog page, um, that you don't change any of these, that you keep it the same across the board for your site. And the reason I say that is because there is the option to make some SEO changes on each and every page and each and every post. And I'm going to go show you that now. So there's probably very little, you know, but if you find that, if you find that you want to use this, then you can. I, I wanted to show you that you can come in here. And, but remember that these are actually for the templates, so whatever you do as posts, it's going to show on every single post. Um, on pages, it's going to show on all of your pages. So it's kind of an across-the-board thing. So what I like to do is I like to set my base SEO for my entire site um, on the default, which is the blog index, and I just leave it that way. And unless I change it on the individual pages in the pages area, I don't really come back and touch this. That's not to say that I won't. This is something a little bit new for Headway, um, allowing you to add SEO to the actual templates. This is kind of new with the new 3, um, I don't know, but 3.0, or it might even be with just the new 3.3. .3. I just happened to notice it the other day when I went in to change some SEO on a client site. So, um, you know what you can do as far as your base overall website SEO. This is where you're going to do it is in the headway area. But we just talked about doing it on individual pages and posts. So let's start with the pages. And let's go to a page that I already have in here. I don't think I've got anything yet. It says everything about your business. Um, you're getting ready to publish this new page. So what you want to do is before you publish it, down here, you're going to see this little thing that says search engine optimization. It's got the little headway thing here. The first thing you're going to see is a search engine result preview. So right now, before we touch anything down in this area, this is what it would look like if it got found in a search engine. About learning space, everything about your business. And then the website address. So say this is your services page. So you might want to put virtual assistant 
uh, services or um, or homeschooling uh, resources I mean um, you know whatever it is that you want to be you know want it to be found as and if you look up here at the top you'll see that this has changed already. You've typed that in. Now it says homeschool resources. Then in the description, maybe you want to say, um, if it's homeschool resources, maybe uh, courses, quizzes, and, oh, we might want to spell it right, and uh, learning activities for <clears throat> home school instructors. Well, there. Now it tells you a lot more about what this is, you know, what this particular site maybe is going to do. So this is where you want to, you know, pop in a description. And now you can see somebody, somebody finding this in the search engine, homeschool resources, and it tells them a little bit about what the resources are. And it's like, okay, I, I want to go look at that. So you can see why this is a really powerful tool, and you can do this on every page. Um, each individual page, you can add its own SEO. So this is very, very powerful, and it allows you to use even more keywords um, to pull people in. In this case, maybe resources is a it, homeschool, of course, would be a keyword. Resources would be a keyword, maybe quizzes, activities. So you're actually pulling in a lot more keywords while still giving a very a very good description of what um, this particular page is going to do. Now you can do the same thing with every post that you make. If you go to the post, you're going to see that it looks exactly the same. As we go down, here it is. Here's the same search engine optimization. You do the same thing, the title of your post, um, how I made the decision to homeschool, which I didn't, but this is just an example. And again, you've got your description area, so you can give a description of what this, this particular blog post is about. Maybe it's um, why I made the decision, or why, how about why a corporate... Um, big wig <laughs> made the decision to stay home and homeschool our children. This is just an example. Um, with me, it might be a blog post. I just recently did a blog post about um, what to do when the results you get from your virtual assistant aren't what you expect. And so um, my title was, my VA screwed up, now what do I do? And the description was, what to do when the results from your virtual assistant aren't what you expected. So people that, I'm automatically thinking that people that are having a bad experience with a virtual assistant, with what I just described, are going to, you know, be searching for, my virtual assistant made a mistake, or what do I do? And the words that I've used in this description, in my description, I'm going to pull them in. In this case that I've just done here, how I made a decision to homeschool, this is people looking for, you know, stories about other people that have left jobs and stayed home with their kids and decided to homeschool. So you definitely want the title and the description um, to not only reflect your blog post, but to also have those keywords in there um, that are going to, you know, be in a search, that might possibly be in a search that someone is going to make to find out more about homeschooling in this instance. Now, if we scroll down just a little bit, you're going to see all of those no index, no follow, no archive, like we talked about in the headway area, the main site area. Again, these are things that chances are you're not going to use unless it's a private entry or a paid entry like I talked about earlier, but you actually do have the option to do that. and this 301 permanent redirect can actually redirect this particular blog post to a totally different site or location or whatever and um, that's another thing that you're probably never going to use. It's kind of a unique thing for unique situations. I've never had to use it um, 
and I've never run across the situation to use it, but that is what that does. It will you can put in a um a different URL and it will take them directly there. And that is how to put your SEO both site-wide and page and post. So you can see that um, Headway is really, really powerful, has this really, really powerful SEO feature built right into it. You can imagine how much SEO value you can get as you're creating posts for your blog and every post has unique SEO elements to it. Um, it gives you more and more diverse keywords that you can use. Um, your same keywords keep popping up and of course these search engines will end up um, picking those up. So that's a simple overview of doing SEO for your website using WordPress and the Headway theme. I